Listen, there's no law that says I have to be good at video games. I like them, and I like to think I'm good at talking about them, but I'm not very good at them, and that should be quite clear to you after watching this review. Yeah, that's what it looks like when you die in Mega Man. Get used to watching that, because that's gonna happen a lot over the next few minutes. Like many of my generation, I grew up with this franchise. It's right up there with Super Mario Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, Donkey Kong, Metroid, Castlevania, all the classic gaming franchises. This one has a rightful place among them. This is Mega Man, the original Mega Man for the Nintendo Entertainment System. If you've never played a Mega Man game, the story is actually pretty charming, although you wouldn't know it from playing the first game because it doesn't really tell you anything. Uh, Mega Man is actually a robot invented by a scientist named Dr. Light. This guy creates all kinds of robots, and he's absolutely shocked to find an evil scientist named Dr. Wily has reprogrammed six of his most powerful robots to basically take over the world. In a desperate attempt to thwart the wicked plans of Dr. Wily, Dr. Light reprograms one of his more docile robots, a robot that was never meant for the horrors of combat, a robot named Rock. With Rock remodified into the blue bomber we all know and love as Mega Man, the game begins. It's Mega Man's job to hunt down the six robots Dr. Wily has reprogrammed, destroy them, suck up their abilities, and then eventually hunt down Dr. Wily. Now, Mega Man may look like a regular 2D platformer, and it was a pretty common genre in the 80s after all, but what separates Mega Man from other games of its time is that this one is really an action platformer. Action is the focus. Where in a game like Mario, jumping and running was the focus, and the joy inherent with those control mechanics, running and jumping is sort of subtext in Mega Man. The real focus is using his arm blaster to blow up robots. And rest assured, there are plenty of robots to blow up. <laughs> The big hook with Mega Man, and the thing that's made it stand out over the years, is that after you find a boss and kill the boss, you absorb his powers. And for the rest of the game, Mega Man can actually use that boss's powers against other bosses. There's a little bit of strategy to this too, because certain bosses are vulnerable to the weapons of other bosses. So if you can figure out the right pattern to attack the six bosses, it makes the game a bit more manageable. But even so, by Mega Man standards, more manageable only means you're not gonna smash your head into a wall. The bottom line is, Mega Man is one of the most difficult franchises from an era in which difficult franchises were the status quo. This original in particular is just impossibly difficult, and as I've said, I'm not the greatest gamer in the world, but revisiting this game today is a stark reminder that games used to be brutal, and frankly, there's not much out there today that can compare in terms of sheer challenge. I've seen this game beaten one time. A friend of mine did it, it took him roughly 12 hours, uh, not to mention a case of Coca-Cola Classic, after which he slipped into a coma and was mumbling something about Dr. Wily for the next three weeks. True story. But it's the design of Mega Man that made the series stand out back then. There was really nothing like it before Mega Man, and quite frankly, that's the reason that it's lasted as long as it has. It's not only the emphasis on shooting enemies while platforming and absorbing abilities, but it's the design of the levels themselves. There really wasn't a whole lot like Mega Man, and there hasn't been much like it since. Now, being the first game in the series, there are a few drawbacks that would be addressed in later versions. Uh, first, this is a really short game. Most of the later Mega Man sequels featured eight robots to defeat. This one only has six. It also has fewer stages at the end en route to Dr. Wily, so it's definitely shorter than some of the later, more polished Mega Man releases. Also, and perhaps one of the reasons this game feels more difficult than later sequels, is that Mega Man doesn't have all the abilities he would gain in later versions. 
But the bottom line is, it just doesn't matter. Even when you're getting absolutely dominated in this game, you're still having fun. This game is a classic for a reason. It was unique for its time, and it still has that quirky sense of uniqueness today. If you've played the newest releases like Mega Man 9 and Mega Man 10, you owe it to yourself to find this cartridge or download it on the Wii Shop channel. Although subsequent sequels would refine and improve the formula, Mega Man is still one of the very best ways you can spend five bucks.